Hello, Professor Toybox here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and that means it's time for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. We've been looking at the Path Creator tool for the past several weeks, and by now you've seen just how powerful this tool is. There are so many things you can do with it, and I'm barely scratching the surface of its capabilities, even with all of these episodes I've devoted to it. But I want to try to cover as many of the properties, settings, and logic connections as possible, and show you how to use it in as many different ways as possible, so you have plenty of examples. Today we're going to look at another capability of the Path Creator, and that is the ability to connect a player to the path. And this locks the player's movement so they can only travel in 2D along the path, and it's a useful feature for creating a side-scrolling platformer. So as we get started, I'm going to go over to the Path Creator, and we're going to draw a path along the sidewalk here. And we'll start at this point, and we'll drop another point down here on this end of the sidewalk. And then I'll exit out of Point Mode, come into Spark Mode, and come over to the point. And we'll open up the Logic menu. And there are two properties under here that are relevant to this capability, and they're both under 2D character movement. And if I select that, the first one is the width, and this is how far a player can move away from the path. And so this would be to the left or right of the path here. And if you select cha uh, change this to four units, that'd be equivalent to one block. So that's similar to the dynamic trigger and some other toys that we've seen. I'm going to leave this set at zero. And the other property is the Force 2D character facing, which is on by default. And that means that the player can only face towards the next or previous point along the path. And I'll leave that on for right now. And one other thing, let's go ahead and just turn off this auto start. I don't think that makes a difference, but just for my peace of mind. And then I'm going to drop down two more toys. First a button that we'll use to put us on the path. And a trigger area that we can use to get us off the path. Because if we don't do this, then there's no way to get him off of the path. And I'll connect up the button first. So we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. Come over to the path creator. And there's two behaviors associated with this capability. You can activate 2D character movement, and this will attach the player to the path. And restore 3D character movement, this takes the player off the path. So for the button, I want to activate that. And we'll do it for the triggering player. And then for the trigger area, oops, not the floor, <laughs> the trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to the Path Creator, and we will restore 3D character movement for the triggering player. And now we can go ahead and test this out. So if we push the button... Now it doesn't automatically put me over there, but as I'm moving, you'll notice it's moving me diagonally and putting me on that path until I'm here. And now I'm moving back and forth. If I try to move to the left or right, all he does is turn his head. And I can't actually go anywhere. And if I come to the end of the path, that's as far as it'll let me go. And if we come this way, as soon as I enter the trigger area, now I'm free to move in 3D again. And so that's helpful. <laughs> and now if I come over here, just to kind of show you what those properties do a little bit. I'll come back into the properties. And down to 2D character movement. And I'm going to set this now to 4, so we'll give him a 1, well we'll do 2. I'll give him uh, the ability to move to either end of that sidewalk, and I'll turn the flag off for character facing. Mm -hmm. 
And when we push the button this time, now it snaps me over here. That's interesting. But now I can move all the way to either side of the sidewalk. But I still can't move any further this way. I can, however, face this way and that way, which can be useful if I want to have a ladder or something back here. And again, I have to come all the way to the sidewalk, to the trigger area, and now I can leave the sidewalk. And so that's how you connect a player to a path, and by doing so, you can create a, pat a platforming style game like this. And so what I've done over here is I've built a little obstacle course, and I've already got the button connected to another path, and the starting point is there, the ending point is over here at the end of that. I've got a trigger area down here that'll get me off of the path, and I've got another one up here, and that will also get me off of the path, and I've connected that to a party cannon and an action enforcer to celebrate when I reach the finish line. And if you want to see how to hook those up, you can review episode 17, and that shows you how to do that. One additional piece that we need that would be helpful would be able to have the camera back out a little way so we can see a bit more. And so we haven't talked about cameras yet, but we can come over here and pick up the sidestep camera, and I'm going to turn it to face my little uh, platforming world over there. And I'll drop the camera right here. And I'm not going to change any properties or anything. We just need to hook it up. So we'll, when we push the button, this will connect us to the path. And I will also do, when pressed, come over to the camera and activate it. And when we enter the trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. Come over and deactivate the camera. And the same thing for this trigger area up here. New logic connection when entered by player any. Come back down to the camera and turn it on. Or turn it off, rather. And there we go. So the button will connect us to the path, as we showed earlier, and also activate the camera. And entering either trigger area will disconnect us from the path and deactivate the camera. So now we can go ahead and run our little course and see what it looks like. So as we push the button, that activates our camera. We're now over here on the path, and I've got it set up so he faces one direction or the other. Now you'll notice Mickey's feet aren't glued to the path. He can jump and climb vertically at any point along the path, so we can go upward as high as we like, or downward as far as we like, as long as we're over the path line. Whoa! <laughs> there we are. And we just missed that platform. So you can see we've set up a little side-scrolling game here, and this is how you would do it. It's pretty easy. That path creator makes it pretty simple to do. There's some other tricks that would be involved in this, but this would be enough to get you started for now, if you wanted to make your own. And there we are! We've made it to the end of the course. Hooray! <laughs> I'm sure by now you're probably wondering if we're done with the path creator yet, and when we're going to move on to something else. Well, I've got one more lesson with the path creator, and it's about branching paths. So we'll look at that next time, and then we can finally get back to our Fantasia toy box. For now, I want to thank you for watching today, and for sticking with me during this long series of lessons involving the path creator. Hopefully you found these videos helpful. If you enjoy Disney Infinity and you like my videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel or sign up on my blog so you don't miss a single episode. That's all for me today. Have a great weekend.